my name is Marcy Melzer, and I'm an intuitive language facilitation and consultant. And what I'm going to do today is help you understand some new tips for negotiation. The strategies that I'm going to be talking about today are designed to help you work through those periods of time when you're feeling like there are power struggles. If you feel like your child's trying to manipulate you or that you have to manipulate your child with behavior, the, these negotiation tips are going to help you move forward with your child. But I want to show you this really quick first. And that is I want to remind you about my Language Facilitation Basics Independent Study Course. And this is a way for you to learn to become your child's language facilitator as an independent study situation. And so you can go to my website, wavesofcommunication.com, and look at all the details about the Language Facilitation Basics course. And there is a two-week full refund satisfaction guarantee. It is a $500 course. You can use the money to upgrade into coaching programs if you want. I basically take you through the training you need to become your child's language facilitator. And when the parents who sign on to work with me, they also go through this training because my job as a language facilitator, coach, and consultant is to train, equip, and empower all of you to teach your child to talk without needing a guide or a therapist or anybody else. You can learn to become your child's language facilitator with the resources on my platform. So on the website, wavesofcommunication.com is how you want to do it. And if you haven't investigated that independent study course and you are been watching YouTube videos, maybe you read the book and you're not feeling like you are at the next level, you're not finding the success you want to get, the independent study course might have the information you need to get you over there. Head to the website, you can read all about it. Okay, now, without further ado, let's get into talking about negotiation and the number one tip that I have to share with you. And that is that you are advised to give your child, even your late talking child who isn't talking at all or using very limited spoken language, you want to give them credit for having their own opinions and ideas. Just because your child isn't able to talk and share them with spoken language, they are communicating with you. So here's what you need to know about this, and this is how this works. Lay talkers learn about their world by watching analyzing and memorizing the behaviors that they witness. Some of it is listening, but most of it is not with late talkers and they watch and memorize what people do. So because late talkers learn like this, parents should assume that your child understands conceptually a lot, lot, lot more than they can express in words. And a lot of parents don't believe this or give their kids credit for understanding why things work or how things work or the concepts behind them, but many lay talkers do. And yours probably does as well. All right, so the next thing you need to know is that lay talkers definitely communicate their ideas and opinions with their behavior. Just a facial expression will tell you that your child has an opinion about something, okay? And their behavior, if they come and want more of it, they like it. If they go away and throw it away, they don't. So you know through your child's behavior how they are already communicating their ideas and opinions. And you always want to be open, have an open mind to discuss your child's ideas and opinions, whatever they're thinking about, whatever they're showing you, whatever they're doing to demonstrate that they've got an idea and their idea might be, I want to have more cookies. You know what I mean? But you know that they have an idea and they got that idea somehow, whether they came up in their own head or they were triggered by something that happened in their environment. If you're right there, you're going to say, hmm, my kid's doing this thing. He's got to be in his bonnet. He's got an idea about something. And you know what that is. When you see the idea, say it out loud and discuss it with your child. 
okay, you're really hungry. I, you know, so that's why you're climbing the cabinets to get some food, right? Talk about your child's behavior and talk about the reasons they do their behavior because that's why they're communicating, okay? And this is going to help you with your negotiation because when you say your child's issue, idea, problem, whatever it is out loud, then they know, number one, that you have been paying attention to them. And number two, you indicate when you say, oh, you want a thing, that you care enough to help them try to get that thing. And so they're going to stop doing what they're doing and look at you and open the door for negotiation. Oh, you know I'm hungry. What do you got to offer, right? That's how you want to open the doors for communication. So that's the number one strategy. Let's move into number two. Number two is to see the situation, the negotiation situation, from your child's perspective, okay? And you want to identify your child's true motivation for their request. They're hungry, they're bored, they are sad, they're lonely, they want a connection with you, they want to move away from you, they're too much, too much, you're too boring or whatever. You identify your child's true motivation for their request. And their request might be like, I want to get out of here, right? But you have to, and that's that first step. You must identify. Number two, you have to interpret the feelings and or drama behind your child's request. They have a reason that they've chosen it. It might not be a reason that you think is reasonable, but it is their reason. It is their drama. And if you don't see their drama and understand their drama, whether you agree or not, you're going to have a hard time negotiating with them, okay? So the third one there is you want to really ask yourself this question. Does your child even understand the rules and boundaries surrounding this request, okay? Does your child know that they can only have two cookies in a day? Does your child know that you are limiting their screen time or are you just doing it periodically? Do they know the rules of how much of this thing they can do. They, do they know when they can go outside and when they can't? Do they know? And because this is a big deal, your child can't follow rules that they don't know about, right? And then the, the other one is what historical, this is really, really, really important for this, okay? That you have to look from your child's perspective is what historical events have happened in your life that have empowered this child to use their negotiating, to believe that they are empowered to break the rules, negotiate, bend, break, do what they want, even though they know they're not supposed to, or another time you said no, or whatever. If they're manipulating you, that means they're going to try to get you to do something that you are not readily doing on your own. Okay, and if you're not readily doing that thing on your own, is it because you don't want to do that thing or because it's against the rules or because you just didn't know they wanted it and it's okay? All of those things, it's very important to understand behind your child's request. Okay, so that way you can respond with the right kind of negotiation. Okay, now let's move into number three. Number three is to choose your battles strategically, okay? Pick your battles, right? And here's how you do this. You have to consciously decide on your most important values. Think about it. You can't be flaky about this. You have to decide, do I want my kid to have a lot of screen time, no screen time, two cookies a day, five cookies a day? I don't want them to eat this. I do want them to eat this. You have to decide on your most important values. Usually they're around safety and health things are the biggest things that are no-brainers. But you, these are the boundaries that are non-negotiable. And when I talk about non-negotiable, I mean never. You can never hit somebody, bite somebody or whatever without some kind of consequences, right? And that's the next bit about this. Very important is that you have to decide when you make these boundaries that are non-negotiable, Prepare yourself for your child to push the boundaries because that's what kids do, right? And then you have to decide on what are the reasonable consequences that you're going to institute every single time consistently that will reinforce the rules that you want to make. If you change the rules, the new rules, 
whatever. Maybe you didn't have rules before and you need new rules. But you have to decide what's going to happen when your child breaks it. So, and, and it's not just a punishment. It cannot be a punishment. It has to be something that's going to reinforce the rule and encourage your child to learn the lesson so they don't break the rule again and have to deal with those consequences again. Consequences are designed, true consequences are designed to teach a lesson, okay? Not punish for wrong choices. And there's a difference, okay? Reasonable consequences. And then this next one is allow yourself to change your mind about ideas and offer a reasonable alternative to your own, all right? So and here's the thing. It has to contribute to a happier outcome for everybody, okay? So if... Think about your negotiation history. If you're negotiating about something and somebody wants something and together the ideal outcome of the negotiation is that everybody is happy, okay? You might not be as happy as you would be if you got your first option, but you're still happy, okay? And it's not a firm, good, true negotiation unless everybody's happy. Because if one person's happy and one person's not, that's a deal with it situation and that's an oppressive situation and that's not negotiation. That's dictatorship, okay? The difference. If you want negotiation, negotiation, listen, every kiddo's trying to do it. If you don't want manipulation, which is the opposite of negotiation, dictatorship, right? If you don't want manipulation, you have to teach your child how to negotiate and you have to be open to negotiations because dictators don't negotiate. You want to be political about this. You want to be open for it. And let me show you one more time to remind you, allow yourself to change your mind about ideas that you used to think were firm in your mind. I never want to give my kid any screen time. And then you're like, well, maybe my kid does need some screen time. That's okay if you change your mind. It certainly is. Okay, as long as there, it's a reasonable alternative because you're not going to go from no screen time to unlimited screen time. You're going to make a reasonable accommodation that allows you, yeah, my kid might need to access to both entertainment and educational information. And I want my kid to be good at using a tablet because in their future, they're going to need it for their life and their work and whatever. Everything's going to be online. So it's up to me to show a reasonable compromise. This much screen time, this kind of content, this kind of situation. And these are the rules, the new rules. When you make up rules, you make rules so that everybody's happy as a result of the negotiation, right? The new rules evolve. So that's this, this strategy here is to make new rules with compromise that make everybody happy. Okay. Let's move into number four. And number four is to level the playing field and share the power, okay? Usually in these situations where someone is feeling manipulated, that means that one person is power hungry and they are trying to overpower the other person and they don't even want to hear their answers or hear what they got to say or nothing. And this can happen on both sides, you and your child because your child can get ideas that they don't want to compromise and so do you. Remember, you made the rules, right? And you're the boss in this situation, so you have to share the power. A good boss is not a dictator. It's someone who shares and understands. So remember, negotiations are resol resolutions to power struggles. That's how everybody's happy at the office when you negotiate new rules. That's how everybody stays happy in the house, right? Your productive negotiation happens when everyone feels like they are being heard. And this is very, very important. If your child doesn't feel like they're being heard, then they're not going to try even to negotiate. They're going to sneak around and break rules without you, okay, and deal with consequences because you haven't shown them that the rules are valuable, that the rules have a reason for them, okay, and it's very important that you do that. Now, Level the playing field. Say the rules, right? Talk about all of that. And talk about your child's point first. Oh, you are hungry. You want a treat. You are bored. You feel a certain way. And to let them know that you understand their perspective before you start negotiation, right? You want to open the lines. This is very important. Open the lines of communication for negotiation before 
before you express your point of view or dig in and review the rules, okay? I use this example of quitting the gym or, um, oh, I, paying your rent late or something like that where you broke the rules, you, you, did your pay, you made your payment late or whatever. And remember, these places like leases and gyms and things like that, they have these long contracts with all these caveats that say, you, you know, that make it hard for you to stay in the rules basically sometimes. And they, there's no flexibility. They're not willing to negotiate at all. They say, well, yeah, I know maybe you, you know, you couldn't have access to your bank account, but that's not our fault because we've got these rules, right? That's not negotiation at all. And that is super frustrating to be on the other end of, look, the whole point of negotiation is I know there are rules, but there are sometimes exceptions to those rules. And that's what negotiation is. It helps you evolve because sometimes the rules are not effective. And sometimes there are exceptions to rules. And if you want your child to be open-minded and willing to change away from their own mindset of, I've got to eat 10 cookies a day, then they've got to understand why eating less cookies a day, fewer cookies a day, is a good idea for them, that they choose to make that decision instead of it being forced on them for your own good or because there are the rules or whatever. That's the worst thing for anybody who wants negotiation, who's been affected by something out of their control. And that's the other thing, right? Your child may be triggered. They see other kids eating cookies and they're gluten-free. And they can't have cookies, right? So you've got these rules and your kiddo's sad because they want to be eating cookies and the other kids can't, right? You have to negotiate with your kid. How can I make you feel happy? If you're a smart mom, you'll be prepared with a gluten-free snack. You can't eat those fab cookies that those kids are eating that look so delicious, but I've got another one here for you that you can have. So you can have your treat too. Right. This is what we do as parents. We think about we set these things up, but talking through those situations with your child in the moment shows them that maybe if you don't have what they want or you want what they don't have, you know, whatever, something like that, then there is a way out of this situation. There is a way out. Negotiation. Because you problem solve together when you work through it together. Okay. Okay. All right, that was number four. Number five is to present an offer that your child can't refuse, right? That's always the best um, solution to a manipulation slash communication, uh, manipulation standpoint, right? Dictator standpoint. So what you want to do in this case is that the first rule about this tip is that you never, never, never should compromise on your boundary just for a temporary behavior change. I want my kid to quit screaming, so I give them, in, so I give in. And you compromise on your boundary and you give in. So you definitely don't want to do this because it teaches the wrong behavior. It teaches your child to keep doing the thing that you don't want them to do. And it shows them that you're wishy-washy and they can manipulate you, okay? You don't want to teach your child that you are wishy-washy. You want to teach your child that you are open for negotiation and that's how you do it. You highlight your child's true need. We talked about this. You want to treat, you are hungry, you are bored, you are whatever, right? And then you offer a reasonable solution that makes everybody happy. That's what negotiation is. We already had our candy today, our two pieces of candy that were allowed every day. How about a song? Because you like it when I sing songs with you, right? It doesn't even have to be food. It's just your child wants a treat. They want to feel good. They feel good when they eat sweets. What else can make them feel good? You know this because it's your child, right? The next one is you offer empathy, hugs and kisses and understanding of disappointment if you can't deliver the request. It is a bummer that you can't eat 10 cookies a day and still stay skinny. 
That is a bummer. But you can have empathy for somebody who loves cookies and doesn't want to eat them, you know, and wants to eat them, but they can't. And you can say, I'll go sing with you, or I'll hug and kiss you, or I will have a good time doing something else to help distract yourself from the sadness and disappointment that you're feeling. Because I'm your friend, and I want to help you. I'm your mom. I want to help you get better, right? This is what you do. We all have bummers in our life. We all have things that we can't get or do when we want them. That's it. Bummers of life. You know, and it causes us to take action to, to investigate and get those things. So you got to say, wow, it's a bummer that you don't have to do this because the next thing you do is you remind your child when and how they will have the opportunity, the next opportunity to get that desire. So we've already had our two pieces of candy today, but tomorrow at 2 p.m. after you watch your video, we can have two more pieces of candy, right? And that's how you get through your Halloween candy and it takes you six months to eat it. You know, it's okay because it's probably still good. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about all this negotiation, about all of it, is exchange of, okay, I understand that it can't be like it is, right? It can't be like I want it. It can't be like you want it. You want something different than I want and neither one of us want this. So we've got to work together to negotiate, to put it together and decide what is an outcome for everybody. And hopefully these strategies will help you. Let's review them one more time, all five. Five tips for successful negotiation with your late talking child. Number one, you want to give your child credit for having their own opinions and ideas. Number two, you want to see the situation from your child's perspective. Number three, Choose your battle strategically. Number four, level the playing field and share the power. And number five, present an offer that your child cannot refuse, that definitely meets their needs, okay? So those were the five strategies for successful negotiation with late talking children. I see Laura join me. Laura says, I've learned so much about negotiations and compromises. It's true. Um, it amazes me daily how smart late talkers are. So that's it. If you feel like you're in a position where you've got to guide and prompt your child through everything in their life, then these strategies will help you. Because you are not, if you feel like you've got to guide your child through everything, you're not giving them credit for all the language that they know and understand. And when you do, when you move into giving your child a little power as far as negotiation by understanding what they're saying with their body, with their nonverbal communication, turning that into the spoken language that they need and helping them use it, right? That's what turns a late talker into a talker learning how to use the words that they have memorized and they understand functionally to get their needs met and negotiation is what every single child starts doing from like nine months old you know they cry a little more to get to hold them a little bit more right they know how to manipulate you and get you to do things and they start watching you and learning from you at birth Parents are going to be better at this than anybody else if your child has limited spoken language because you intuitively know their patterns better and you know why they go to the kitchen or why they drag their cart around or why they, you know, bang on the do door to go outside. You know why they do these behaviors and you know what they want right? These strategies will help you instead of just guessing, giving it to them and having to keep guessing and giving and guessing and giving and guessing and giving. It will help your child learn to use the spoken language they need to tell you all the things they want and need and why they want and need them and why you need to give it to them right now. And that's what their negotiation is. Okay. So thanks again for joining me. Not seeing any more questions today. And I will see you all on my next video. Bye for now. Thanks for listening in today. And remember, there are tons of resources across my Waves of Communication platform to help you get started today on your language facilitation journey. There's more than 200 free videos on YouTube, a daily blog in my group on Facebook, my book, If It Isn't Fun, It Isn't Fun, Teach Your Child to Talk Faster Than Speech Therapy is available on Amazon and Audible, and my coaching programs. And all the details are on my website at wavesofcommunication.com.